Hello, Dan here from Misty Acres Farm. Uh, you can find me and Lindsay at lifeonmistyacres.com. And today I'm coming to you because I want to show you our maple syrup cooker. Uh, we've posted a lot of pictures as we built the cooker over the winter time. We've showed a lot of pictures of us cooking. We've showed a lot of pictures of our furnished, finished product, but we haven't actually shown a whole lot of footage of our cooker in action. So that's what we wanted to do today, um, is we just wanted to show you our maple syrup cooker evaporating off the water to make our syrup. Um, so I'm, I'm basically going to run you through our cooker. Uh, this is our third and final cook of the season. Uh, we've made, oh, we're going to be about probably about six gallons of maple syrup this year. Uh, we're not professionals. We do it as a hobby. We sell some on the side. Uh, it's been a growing part of our farm as we've we've grown every single year um, but don't think that we're professionals um, this year was our first year where we took and went and built a new cooker that we could actually handle some volume and uh, it's been really cool to see it happen what in years past has been a really really big project and days and days and days of cooking we really were able to narrow it down to three days this year and we cooked down hundreds of gallons of maple sap. Uh, today we started at about noon and we have cooked down about a hundred gallons of sap. Uh, we've got some in our main pan and our, our, our reserve pan and, and that's everything we plan to cook today and in years past this would have taken us at least the entire weekend cooking through the night to be able to handle a hundred gallons of sap. So I'm just going to show you what we built here. Um, the design is not my own. I've adapted it and made a few of my own uh, tweaks to the plan. Um, I'm not sure where the plan originated from, but I got it from at Middle May Farms uh, on their blog as they built their cooker out of a, a fuel oil tank. Um, I took their plan, I looked at their blog post, um, I liked what I saw, uh, put my own twist to it, and have adapted since. And uh, I was a little bit hesitant as to how, how well their pan and their, or how well their plan and their cooker would work. Um, but the results this year have been, I've been very pleased at how it turned out. Um, so let me just show you what I have here. So what we've got is, it, if you are un, have, have seen a fuel oil tank, it's immediately recognizable, but it was a tank that was used to hold fuel oil um, for older furnaces and older homes. Uh, very few people actually use fuel oil furnaces anymore, so you can get these tanks for little to no money. I mean, $50 to free um, is what the tanks go for. And there's a lot of great metal there, and they're great for building maple sap evaporators or uh, pig roasters things like that but that's the base the, the, the base product of our cooker and we took the cook that we took the fuel oil tank and we cut away uh, just the top three quarters of it and uh, that to, to create our firebox now if you look at our paint job our paint job on here I had to do it uh, when it was really too cold to paint and uh, because we built this over the winter time and so you can see that a lot of my paint is coming off uh, we'll, we'll, we'll repair that this summer um, but you can the reason I'm pointing it out is because you can actually see the heat line in the paint um, this is my firebox I took the top three quarters of my fuel oil tank and actually welded it in and you can see my welds if you look closely, you can see my welds where I, I, this entire tank is not my furnace. My firebox is only the front half of the tank. Um, and, and it really has shown as we cooked and fired this as hard as we, we could, it's shown and, and reflects it in the paint. Um, but we've, we basically have made a hollow space down here that stays relatively cool so that we don't waste any heat. This is all lined with fire brick in the fire box and, and up through my, my flue and, and which creates the draft that's tapered in an angle 
which creates the draft to, to basically pull my fire uh, right out my chimney, all lined with fire brick, so it really insulates what I have right here. It's warm, but it's not extremely hot, so I'm wasting no heat. All the heat is going up to my pan. My pan is made out of 304 stainless. Uh, we bought one uh, four by eight sheet of stainless steel. Um, we got the help of some friends at a, at a local machine shop to help us build, to bend this up and uh, just add a few welds. We made two pans and we were, at, we left, were left over with about a two by, oh, I would say 36 inch piece of stainless steel. Uh, that was probably the biggest cost of our entire endeavor here. But we built, we, we, we bent up two separate pans. One is our main cook pan, and the other is our preheat or reserve pan. And what we have here is, uh, you know, we put in a valve so that basically we can use the steam from our pan to preheat raw sap so that when I add it to my main pan, it doesn't completely kill my boil. Now this water right here, or this sap I should say, right here is actually quite warm. This is warmer than bath water. Um, it's, it's, it's actually close to a simmer. So when I add that to my main pan, it's ready to boil as soon as I apply a little bit more heat. And that's just happening from the steam coming off the pan below it. So I can slowly add this sap without destroying my boil and, and keep my entire process going uh, very well. I picked up a, from the local hardware store I bought a barrel stove kit, which is made to uh, turn a 55 gallon drum into a, you know, a, a heat source, that's what it's made for. But the kit comes with uh, basically the, the bracket for my flue and the door and a set of legs. I didn't use the legs because fuel oil tanks, uh, they're already set up with inch and a quarter uh, NPT threads. So I just cut some pipe nipples, threaded them, and, and put them right to use as legs. Uh, the blocks that we use to hold them up are just basically, uh, you know, they're, they're uh, uh, blocks used for bracing decking to keep it from sagging, any posts. Um, but the, the legs stand right in there. We leveled it when we set it to the ground. Uh, in the future, we'll be able to show you guys a sugar shack as, as we have different ideas we're working through in our minds to build a, the Misty Acres sugar shack. But we use that kit and we use the door and we use the, uh, the chimney hardware um, to make really a rather attractive looking. It's, it's a little bit rough after all the cooking we've done this year, um, but it's, 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 it was a lot better than a lot of the designs I saw where people welded their own doors, didn't fit very well. This is trimmed out really nice. Uh, we put in a stainless steel nipple and a well nut to be able to uh, drain our pan. Uh, we got two different valves here. We used a sampling valve, which is nice because it keeps any of the finished product from drip, you know, from running back onto the nipple, which a lot of your hose spigots and regular straight valves will do. And then we just use some ball valves to be able to control the flow. Um, the whole the whole project. I mean, it took probably I've probably got about. 30 hours into the project. Um, the, the biggest surprise expense was the fire brick. I didn't, I didn't realize or figure, figure out how much fire brick it would take. And the price of fire brick is ridiculous. So if you decide to utilize this plan or build any cooker, if you are able to find anyone in your area that's selling used fire brick, snatch it up. Uh, that was really kind of the hidden expense I didn't see. I've probably got about $700 uh, in building this cooker. Um, it does look a little bit rough, but again, that's because my paint, it was too cold for my paint to properly cure. But we wanted to jump ahead and just show you the cooker in action and, and show it being used. And being that this is our third cook, we've been really happy with what we've gotten from it so far. And I would recommend following this design. There's things that we're gonna change. There's things that we'll tweak in the off season, but I would rec recommend this, this design, at least as your base design for whatever you plan to build. Um, it works well, it's very efficient. Um, we've cooked our entire batches. We've done it on old pallets. We prefer the oak ones. 
Uh, we've been able to acquire pallets for free from different businesses and we just cut them up and use that as our fuel source. So we went from using propane cookers, uh, turkey fryers and things like that. We'd run multiples of those with a stainless steel pan. We've gone from that where we were spending over $100 a year in propane to our fuel being literally free. It's only costing us the gas of the chainsaw we're using to cut them up. Uh, we use primarily oak. A little bit of pine doesn't bother me at all. And we feed them into the cooker and, and we don't want plywoods or things that are containing a lot of glues or treated. But we put them in there and that's what we've been using to cook. And so really our finished product has, be, has really become free if you don't take into account, of course, our labor and time. So just wanted to give you guys a look at what our cooker and how it worked. Um, we will have a lot of follow-up posts and we might even put some actual plans uh, on the website. So if you're interested, you can follow us, uh, subscribe to our emails and be able to get a printable at that point. But, well, this is how we do it on Misty Acres Farm.